You hear the chants. Rightfully so. Much deserving, because we are joined by a 10-time Pro Bowl wideout. And as you can see, you know a little something about the uh, big plays in the big game. We want to welcome Larry Fitzgerald to the show, and you're joining us as a finalist for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide. Larry, thank you so much for being with us. I appreciate you guys having me. And let me just say this. Besides being a a phenomenal wide receiver, one of the best in the game on the field, you're such a class act, and the work that you've done with your first down foundation and just paying it forward is so impressive, and and what an honor. It's it's, so deserving. What does that mean to you? Well, it means a great deal. Um, You know, I kind of is a product of my parents. I had two wonderful parents and uh, they, they still, to this day, you know, the examples they set for me as a child are the things that I still keep near and dear to my heart. And, um, you know, I, I think so much attention is paid to guys who are not doing the right thing and not enough attention is paid to the guys. And most of the guys... You're are right. We don't right. hear those yeah. stories. Um, so, last year, or this season, coming into the season, you guys had high expectations and underachieved. It kind of reminds me of the Falcons last year. Right? Atlanta had all these high expectations. They underachieve. And then the following year, they get back on top. Have you thought about that? Have you talked about that with anyone? Does the, is the team aware of stuff like that and are thinking, okay, we were a year early with this stuff. We're ready to go next year. Well, yeah, it was definitely a disappointing season. And, and a season that really, as I look back, you know, I can't pin place, uh, pinpoint what it was that really threw us off our course. Um, you know, but it started early. You know, in preseason, we didn't start off very well. But the talent that we have uh, in all positions, you know, from Patrick Peterson to Tyron Matthews to David Johnson, I mean, Carson Palmer, we have a lot of talented players. And we can compete with anybody in the National Football League. But we just didn't bring it this year for some reason. Why the question? about your future why were you I mean based on what we were hearing you were strongly con- contemplating retirement take us through that what this season was like for you and how did that affect your mentality or was it just one of those situations where you said I'm getting old it might be time well Stephen I, I mean I was just exasperated physically psychologically um, and spiritually you know after not having the season that you know you're capable of having um, physically just being banged up um, you know and after 13 seasons in the National Football League I was just I was just banged up I needed a little bit of time to kind of think about my scenario, uh, my situation, and how I was feeling. And honestly, just sitting back and watching playoff games, you know, that fire still burns. You know, I want to I be a champion, see, seeing Julio making them plays in the, in the NFC Championship game and things of that nature, you know, just really invigorated me. Real quick, how does, when you, when you allude to how we hear so many negative stories, but somebody like you who's done extraordinarily positive things throughout your career and just exemplified excellence on and off the field, how does... A season like this affect you, particularly if a Michael Floyd gets himself in a, a precarious situation of other individuals simply are not on their game off the field in terms of the focus, the dedication, and doing the right things. How does that affect somebody like you and your desire to continue to play? I don't think it affects my desire to continue to play, but I feel like as I, I let I let people down, you know, because a guy like Michael Floyd, that's like a little brother, you know, he lived with me. We're from the same place in Minnesota. Um, you know, I, I took it personal, you know, um, and so it really bothered me. But and I'm really happy he landed on his feet. Yeah, so um, you know, God works in mysterious ways, and I really hope that he can revitalize his career and make a big impact on Sunday to help his team because he's a good kid. But we do make mistakes. Yeah. Unfortunately, we're under the spotlight, and anything that we do is going to be uh, magnified, is that we have to be aware of that. Larry, I want to go back to the season. Max and Stephen A. both know this. I picked you guys to win the Super Bowl. I thought this was the year you're not devoid you of had talent. had the same pick, though. I, yeah, I, okay. I, 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 it didn't I, I, turn out. Congratulate each other. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but you got it here's, all wrong. Here's my thing, and I understand you're a vet, and maybe it's prisoner of the moment. We heard Big Ben contemplating retirement. Um, Carson Palmer, you also mentioned it. What did you guys learn from this season, though, that when you do come back, you're going to be a different team? No matter how talented you are, you roll the ball in the field, you're not going to win. People are not going to lay down for you. It doesn't matter what your record was last year or the talents you bring to the table. You've got to come on and you've got to compete every week, and you've got to bring it. To, and, um, and we didn't do that enough. And I think guys learned that. Preparation? Do you think that was No, preparation didn't change at all. Okay. I don't think it changed at all. But, you know, we weren't used to having success. You know, that was kind of the first bit of taste of success that we've had in a long time. And I think guys just didn't handle it as well as we could have. And, uh, and I think Coach touched on that, um, you know, after he addressed the team after the season. Mm-hmm. One of the things that shocked me about you guys this season, I remember last year y'all played so well, but that NFC championship game, the Carolina Panthers really put it on y'all. The attitude was y'all going to come back. Y'all going to make amends for that performance. It almost seemed to have a reverse effect. 
like it just demoralized the team last season. Did that play any role in the kind of season you had? The fact that y'all had lost in the NFC Championship game in the fashion that you had lost to Carolina the year before? No, see, I don't think that had any lingering effect. I, I understand that was embarrassing loss. We didn't play uh, uh, well at all, but, you know, we had a great offseason. You know, we did things the same way we always have done them. Um, you know, I, I, honestly, it's hard to put a finger on it. You know, we just did not perform well on any, on any phase, and, um, you know, it, it's disturbing. Now, I, I did a radio show with Marcellus Wiley for five years, and we did Sports Nation together, and he used to tell a story about how the Giants called him in 07, going into that season where they won the Super Bowl. They wanted him to be on the team, and after 10 years, he said he'd had enough, he retired, and then, of course, the Giants went on to win the Super Bowl, and he, and he never got to win a Super Bowl. How much of the fire that still burns for you right now is because you see the talent on the team, and you're thinking to yourself, you know, this happened to, like, Don Mattingly with yeah. the Yankees. Yeah. He retires, and they win the Super Bowl next, the following season. And you're that kind of 10-time Pro Bowler, a legendary figure in the franchise. How much of it is just my luck? I'm going to retire, and these <laughs> dudes are going on and win a Super Bowl, and I'm going to miss it. That's the only thing, that, that's the only thing that, I, that I play for at this point, the personal accolades. Anything else doesn't really matter. It pales in comparison to, you know, being a champion. And at the end of the day, as a professional athlete, that's what you strive for. That's what you work for. And that's what it's all so about. So it's the chance, the talent on this team that's keeping you around, too. Just the chance, you know, because I, I know we have a, a lot of talent. I look at the Atlanta Falcons getting to this Super Bowl talk because we've got to get to this. We've heard a lot of things about the New England Patriots and, you know, what they're capable of doing, particularly against the run. But we've, all, we've heard more about how high-powered Atlanta's offense is. Julio Jones, Muhammad Sanu, Taylor Gabriel. And then you got these cats out of the backfield and Freeman and uh, Coleman. When you look at this Atlanta Falcons team, how worried should the New England Patriots be based on how much we've heard about Atlanta's offense? They should be very worried. I mean, for what the Atlanta Falcons have done, especially the last few games, they should be very concerned because Kyle Shanahan does an unbelievable job of putting his guys in formations and, and sets and motions that, that free guys up and get them in a position where they can make plays. And New England Patriots have got to be able to tackle the catch. When guys make catches in Atlanta Falcons, where they hurt you is where they break tackles and guys extend plays, and they have to be able to limit those explosive plays. Who are you rolling with? I'm going with the Patriots. Yeah. I never, never go against Tom. Tom, Tom, is, Tom is the best the game has ever seen, um, and he's just—he's a true joy and pleasure to be able to watch. And Matt Ryan, you think he shows up for the big game? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's going to have 300 plus yards and a couple of touchdowns. But you know, I just let me ask you this because you said Tom Brady. If you switch their defenses, who do you like? <laughs> so in other words, you're attributing it to the quarterback, but yeah, I'm Matt Ryan right. might be the MVP this year. Yes. Has more offensive weapons. Yes. Has a good offensive line. Yes. But doesn't have the same defense. This is true, or the experience. You know, I mean, this is six, the seventh time Tom Brady's played in this game. Mm -hmm. He understands what it's all about, and um, you know that experience always comes into play. Let me put it more succinctly. I'm thinking about the 39-year-old Tom Brady who's in the seventh Super Bowl against a few dudes on Atlanta's defense. 22, 23, 24 years old. I mean, wet behind the ears, breast smelling like Similac. <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out how to, uh, how, what they're going to do with Tom Brady. Yeah. Is, that, is that the right way to look at it? That definitely is. You know, I, I, I'm thinking Tom Brady's licking his chops. Um, the only thing that they really can do to neutralize him, Dwight Franey, Vic Beasley, these guys have got to be able to create pressure with, uh, without bringing pressure. Uh, they, they can't blitz Tom Brady consistently because he does an unbelievable job of picking apart defenses that blitz him. Well, how are they going to do it when the man gets rid of the ball inside of two seconds it's got to come from inside tom loves to be able to step up into that pocket you got to be able to get the pressure up that was the giants in the super, you in gotta get, super bowls the way they beat them you got to get them off his mark was, right. they collapse the pockets yeah. the tackles not the ends yeah. right do they have yes. the tackles to get it done i believe so i mean they're very quick athletic guys you know um historically the patriots have been a little lackluster on the on the front line um and i think they're going to definitely have some opportunities to get to them larry i want to talk about julio when you see him what makes him so special on the film well, he's very intelligent. I don't think enough is talked about his intelligence. I mean, Kyle Shanahan moves him around in so many different places, comes out of the backfield. He's inside the numbers, outside the numbers. Um, and he does a really good job of digesting what teams are trying to do to him. Mm -hmm. He doesn't force a lot of things. Um, he, he makes the most of his targets. Uh, and then when he gets the ball in his hands, he's so, so, so powerful of a runner. He, he shoves guys off of him when they're trying to tackle him. He's just... Uh, Unbelievable dominant player. What about naysayers who know recognize the greatness of Julio Jones, but might look at 
Seattle, devoid of Earl Thomas. They may look at Green Bay. Don't get me started with that secondary. I mean, Sam Shields being gone. I mean, the rest of the dudes that was in there, hide and gun them, whatever. It looked embarrassing at times this season watching Green Bay secondary. Julio Jones, the level of competition he went up against is what? Julio doesn't make the schedule. He just beats the guys down that he plays against week in and week out. You know, he, he doesn't say, I want this guy, I want that guy. He just books on the guy who's lining up against him. Mm -hmm. And you can't discredit him for doing that. Do you find yourself looking at Julio Jones? When, the, when he has more than 100 receiving yards, they're 4-4. Four and four. When he doesn't, they're 7-1. and one. So spreading the ball around seems to be the ingredients of success for Atlanta as opposed to targeting him excessively. That might be a mistake by Matt Ryan? Well, I don't think so. I mean, you got you to gotta come in and ride the hand that's been hot. I mean, you got to feed him. He's the most explosive player that's going to be on the field come Sunday. Um, other guys are going to get their opportunity because the Patriots have historically always neutralized your best players. They're going to try to do the, everything they can to take, take him out of the game so the other guys are going to have plenty of opportunities to make their plays. Larry, thank you so much for the time. Congrats again on being a finalist. That's thank huge you. for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, and I'm so glad you're coming back. Thank you. We want to see you again. Thank you.